Welcome to Electro Online. We know that there are two definitions for the dot product. The first definition most of us are familiar with. A dot B, the dot product between two vectors A and B, is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the two. Graphically, you can see here we have vector A and we have vector B and the angle theta between them. A times the cosine of theta, if I take this times the magnitude of A, that is equal to this length right here. It's simply the magnitude projected onto vector B, and if we take this, A cosine theta, and we multiply that times the length of B, the magnitude of B, this would be the result of the dot product. Simply, A cosine theta times B is the dot product. Notice we get a scalar quantity for that. But we also know, or at least we should know, that a dot b is equal to the component in the x direction of a times the component of the, in the x direction of b plus the y component of a times the y component of b and if we do it in three dimensions we get plus a sub z, b sub z, the z components of a and b multiplied together. Since that's true we can then say that well if this is the definition of the dot product definition one and this is the definition of the dot product, definition 2. We can set those equal to one another, which we did over here. We can then solve for the cosine of theta by dividing both sides by a, divide, a times b. And then we can take the r cosine, the inverse cosine, which allows us to find the angle between any two vectors, and that's typically the method that is used. But one of the viewers questioned, saying, well, how do you know that this is true? How do you know that a dot b is equal to the x components multiplied together plus the y components plus the z components and so forth? So what I wanted to do is show you why that is indeed true and that can be done in general using this graph right here. So here we have the a vector, here we have the b vector and the angle between them is theta. Also notice that I have an angle relative to the A vector relative to the horizontal axis and I have an angle of the B vector relative to the horizontal axis. You can see then that the angle theta between the two vectors is simply equal to theta sub A minus theta sub B. Using that information we should be able to prove this equation right here. Because after all what I can do is I can say that A dot B using our first definition is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between them. But in this case, in a more general case, I can say that theta is simply the difference between those two angles, which means that this can be written as A times B times the cosine of theta sub A minus theta sub B. Oop, let me make that look like a B here. Now we have the cosine of the difference of two angles. So let's see if we remember the right equation for that. So what we need to do here is come up with the correct identity for the cosine of the difference of two angles. That happens to be the following. This is equal to a times b times the cosine of theta sub a times the cosine of theta sub b plus the sine of theta sub a times the sine of theta sub b. What we're going to do now is multiply this through. That gives us the following. AB times the cosine theta A cosine theta B plus AB, the magnitudes of A and B, times the sine of theta sub A times the sine of theta sub B. Now we're going to do something clever. We're going to multiply A times this and B times that. We're just simply going to rearrange terms, use the commutative property here. So we can write this as A times the cosine of theta A times B times the cosine of theta B plus A times the sine of theta A B times the sine of theta B. Now what we need to realize is that the magnitude of A times the cosine of theta A, this is simply the x component, right? So we multiply this times the cosine of theta A, we simply get the x component of A. So this can be replaced by, this is equal to A sub x. And likewise, the magnitude of B times the cosine of theta B, that is the 
x component of the b vector. So this is a sub x times b sub x plus, and here, if we take a times the sine of theta sub a, well, that would be the y component right here, projected onto the y-axis, that would be the y component. So this is a sub y, and this here would be the y component of the b vector, b sub y. And therefore, you can see that the dot product, a dot b, can also be defined as the product of the x components plus the product of the y components. And if you want to do this in three dimensions, you can do that. You also get plus the product of the z components. So if you had any doubts that these two are indeed equal to one another, here you have the proof that they are. And that's how it's done.